Hey guys, so today we're going to jump into the September 2024 top 10 units in Dragon Ball Legends list. Uh, as usual, every character is going to be considered at 14 stars, best teams, best scenarios, best equipment, etc, etc, etc. Uh, every character is going to be considered here uh, as based on my personal opinion, based on my personal experience. Um, remember, every character is positioned on this list based on their current position in the meta, not just who is better than who. Um, and then the placements in this list are going to be based off of the characters ranked in the standard format, not in proud. I'm not considering proud for this list, the standard format. So it's been a while since I've made a list. I think it's been about a month and a half. Omega Shenron was the last update I made a list for. Uh, and I really just, I guess, felt like there wasn't really a need to do a list since him because we've barely seen any changes in the metagame since that character released. So. Uh, there might be some adjustments here as compared to the last list, but I, I don't think there's like a massive shift that we've seen in the past, like almost two months, which is insane. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with number 10 and then of course we'll make our way up from there. Number 10 is going to be Super 17. I don't believe I had this guy on my last list, but I think he is in a pretty solid spot right now. Uh, we had the newest addition to the game in LF Tree of Might Goku, who's yellow. Um, and I feel like, you know, we have him, we have like Baby, Fusing uh, Gojira Blue is still, you know, you see him here and there. Uh, you see Raid Shenron here and there. So there, you know, there are some, there are some yellow characters that uh, you, you see pop up every now and then. I think this guy can work pretty well on a GT setup. He works really well with Omega Shenron with the subcount manipulation compared with, or I guess paired up with uh, LF Omega subcount manipulation. The healing reduction is, I think, a really, really strong thing about this character right now. A lot of characters have... Uh, a lot of ways to heal. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta heals a lot. The uh, one-handed Spirit Bomb Goku heals a lot. Uh, the healing reduction also applies to characters that have healing based off of endurance, like Ultimate Gohan, uh, Blue Kid Boo. I mean, I guess that's not really a good, <laughs> it's not really a good example though. Uh, this guy does get crushed by like Blue Kid Boo and uh, Fusing Super Vegito, but um, I think there are definitely ways to work around those characters, especially if you're pairing them with Omega, which I think is what you should be doing anyway. And then, of course, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. The thing about this guy, though, we'll see how they handle the Androids tag moving forward, because the Androids team really hasn't gotten too much in the past, like, since this guy's came out, come out, essentially. The team really hasn't gotten many updates, right? We got, like, Revival Cell, and that's really it. Uh, the Zenkai for Revival Cell. But uh, I don't really think I need to expand too much on this character. You guys know how this guy works. He's pretty hard to initiate against with the green card. Uh, he has the locking when he goes for taps or uh, quick attacks. Um, so pretty annoying character still. I think he's still holding on pretty well, especially with uh, you know decent amount of yellow characters existing now. So Super 17, number 10, let's move on to number 9. All right, so number 9 is going to be Zenkai LF Fusion Zamasu. who's still a really strong character, one of the better Zenkais we've ever seen in this game, honestly. It's kind of still ridiculous to me that they made him as good as they did. Uh, I think this guy's probably fallen a few spots since the last list. Uh, it's just a lot harder to use this guy, I think, against specifically the two best teams in the game right now, which are GT... Well, I guess there's three teams right now. Fusion Warriors, GT, and Majin Buu Saga, I would say, are the three best teams. And against all of those teams, it is very difficult to take advantage of this guy's uh, two best assets, which I, which I think are number one, his AoE green card, which you can combo into the rush or uh, an ultimate, uh, and the main ability, which gives him endurance nullification into a rising rush. It's hard to really take advantage of those two things because there's just so much um, subcount manipulation when the enemy, when a character rushes now, and also combined with the fact that. Um, so many characters remove buffs, right? So if you go for a main ability rush to this character, odds are you're not going to be killing anybody with the rush because there's going to be buff removal somewhere. Um, so I think it's become a little bit more tough to use this character. I actually think one of the better things this guy brings to the table, which is insane to think about, is his bulk. Uh, there's a lot of times where, you know, either uh, players are going to go for ultimates or whatever against this character in hopes of killing him. And as long as this guy survives, he's healing a lot. <laughs> he's healing a lot. Uh, and in, in combination with his uh, unique equipment and with how much bulk this guy just has for being a Zenkai character, um, on top of usually having at least two Zenkai buffs, I guess, depending on the team you're running for him. But um, he's a pretty hard to, t hard to kill character. And I think for me, that actually adds a lot of value to him. But uh, he's definitely not become as free as he was before, especially, I think, um, one of the characters this guy certainly was very, very strong against is Fusing Gojuta Blue. And uh, you just... You know, in, in God rank around there, you just don't run into that character anymore. So I'm going to put him at number nine, but he's still a really good character. So uh, let's move on to the number eight next. 
Okay, so number eight, we have LF Super Baby 2. Uh, this guy's still very good. I think um, he has a pretty deep array of mechanics he's bringing to the table. He's pretty good offensively, pretty good defensively. Um, the one thing with this character, so I actually did do, I haven't put this video up yet uh, for God Rank Grind 66, which I actually just did with the GT team. Uh, we had this movie Z campaign that it's like every single release besides Goku, I think it's just been like nothing <laughs> essentially. So I like started doing the grind with Garlic Jr. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to use GT. And then I just, <laughs> just use GT and it was easy. Uh, but it, obviously on that GT setup, I was using Baby. And um, I, Baby is still a very good character, but it just, I don't know, it feels like he's not really doing as much damage as I remember. I'm not exactly sure why. I think I had a decent setup for him. I was using him with the Zenkai buffer with the uh, Super Saiyan Broly powerful opponent uh, bench character, uh, the Zenkai buffer for him. Had him with Gogeta and Omega. That's like the go-to GD setup for now. And I think, again, the, one of the reasons why I had Super 17 on, on, at number 10 on this list is because I think you could very easily replace Baby with Super 17. Um, I think Baby's a better pick right now just because there's way more purples than yellows you have to worry about at this point, especially with Gogeta still being around and Gohan still being around. Um, so I think color-wise, I'm going to give the advantage to Baby over Super 17 due to just color, yellow being much more valuable than red right now. Um, but yeah, I think if we see a shift in the meta where like, let's just say all of a sudden um, yellow becomes much more dominant or something, then of course Super 17 I think is going to take the lead over Baby. But um, I think, you know, Baby will always be here as a Disrupt character. Uh, we'll have to see how well his gauge ages. So far, it's holding up pretty well because of it only needing three hits to fill up. And then you uh, remove Vanish, you destroy cards. Remember, he goes type neutral with a lock-in. Um, so, I yeah, he, he's a pretty solid character, but like he's, he's, he's not really... He, I don't know what the, what the best way to explain it is. He's not really outstanding in any area. He's kind of just like very good in every area. He's not doing anything way better than any other character is, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, I guess one good thing about Baby that um, now that we have the Tree of Might Goku in the game, uh, if you're somebody who's using Baby and you're fighting against the Tree of Might Goku, one of the strongest things that Goku can do is tackle into a sidestep to connect with his green card and sort of combo that way. Uh, if you're going up against the baby as that Goku, it's going to be really hard to do that because it's just you really don't want to tackle this character because you always have that uh, fear that this guy could potentially have a green card. And instead of you being able to sort of combo on the opponent uh, as Goku by doing that, baby can sort of combo on you because of the tackle counter that he has with the green card. So uh, that is one strong thing this character can do against Goku. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to put baby at number eight. I feel like you could potentially have him like one spot higher if you wanted to, but... Uh, still a strong character. The support is nice. I think um, the gauge still holding up relatively well. And I think the thing that ke is keeping him in the discussion for as long as it has been and is still right now is premium yellow typing. So uh, baby at number eight. Let's move on to number seven. All right. Number seven is going to be green evil boo. Uh, this guy is probably the epitome of what every team needs on their team. I guess. I don't know. It's not like he's doing one thing that's like, oh my God, I wish I had this on this team or something like that. He's just like specifically customized for the Boo Saga team to function as well as it functions. Again, I made an entire video talking about, I, I think this video is gonna go up after the video I do talking about bias. And it really does feel like the development team went into the sixth anniversary with a mission. They were like, if we don't accomplish anything, anything else during the sixth anniversary, at least the Boo Saga team is going to be like the best team in the game by the end of the celebration. If nothing else happens, we are going to die by the fact that the Boo Saga team is going to be the best team in the game by the end of the celebration. And they did everything in their power to make that happen. And, you know, this making this guy the way that they made him is probably the single biggest contributor to the Boo Saga team being as good as it is. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. Ultimate Gohan being as good as he is, Kid Buu Zenkai being as good as it is, the equipment options being ridiculous. But this guy really does feel like the the glue character for the Buu Saga team. Obviously, I think Kid Buu and Ultimate Gohan individually are better as characters than this character, but um, this guy really fits that team exceptionally well. He's, his buff removal, his bulk, his type neutrality, his card destruction, disrupt, key reduction. Like, he's doing what the team needs him to do at all times. 
and I, I really don't think they could have made a better fit for that third character on the Boo Saga team than they did with this evil Boo. Um, this guy honestly probably is better than most LFs we've seen released. I mean, it's just, it's just insane. Uh, locking, supporting, Dragon Ball destruction. Like, there's, I, I could literally list like 20 different things this character is doing and brings to the table for that team. So overall, just a really strong character. And it goes to show how insane he is, even when we have ridiculously good purples right now. And him being number seven on here, I think it's just, it is kind of nuts. So I have Evil Boo at number seven. Let's move on to number six. All right, so coming in at number six, I have LF Tree of Might Goku. This is essentially the only new character that I have on this list from the past two months of releases. I don't think anybody else makes this uh, besides Goku. It's, you know, every release that we've had as part of this Z movie celebration has kind of just been irrelevant, which is insane to think about considering we've had a lot of summonable characters, like eight, nine or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this, this Goku, I think, is pretty damn good. Uh, he did exactly what I was hoping he would do, which is to act as a targeted counter towards Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. And also, in a way, he actually does do a good job of also countering Ultimate Gohan with the healing reduction uh, and stuff like that as well. Um, but this guy being yellow obviously is a very big positive for him. I think if he was any other color, he would probably be significantly lower on the list. Um, I definitely think he's a character that they, they could have made better as well, right? I mean, I went into this release saying, like, okay, like, this character needs to kind of be like top three material and i kind of wish he was a, a bit better um but i think the number one thing that this character needed to be was a counter to gogeta and i think they did accomplish that although again he could have been a bit better i'm not going to deny that uh, but i think in terms of his role uh on his teams you can sort of compare this character in a way to blue ls17 now i'm not saying he's as good as blue ls17 was on release let's not get that conflated i'm not i'm not saying that there's no comparison blue 17 on release was significantly better than this goku is on release i think when that blue 17 came out i think i might have had him at like number two on my list only behind goji to blue or something like that but yeah uh this goku is not certainly not as good as blue 17 was on release but he fulfills a similar role to that blue 17 on his team when he came out which is to be the second or third character. Maybe you just slide him on the leader slot and he's going to help the team work better. He has very, very good ways of gaining um, gaining priority with the long range green card. You can tackle into it. Uh, you can you can basically override opponent's blasts with it to start combos. His gauge, I think, is fairly good. Remember, the gauge can activate even when he's on standby. So you can actually be eating combos with a different character and this goku's gauge filling up can disrupt the opponent's combo from being on standby uh he has multiple ways of getting vanished back so he's a very technical character kind of a character i would almost say you know if you're not as technically sound with the mechanics of the game you're probably going to underrate this guy a little bit um but yeah i do think this character is pretty effective he's solid defensive character he can combo for long periods of time to buy herself time to get in with other characters and he's going to work really well with other characters that have endurance uh even like god goku again i'm not the huge i'm not i'm even though i use god goku a lot in my videos i, d I definitely don't think god goku either was as good as he should have been on release and there's a reason he's not on my list here he i don't even think he's particularly close to making the list but he can work well with characters like that that have endurance because he can um ensure that they survive things like super saiyan 4 gogeta's ultimate uh, and again, this character being as good as he is against Ultimate Gohan and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is one of the reasons why I have him at number six on this list here. So um, I feel like I've pretty much touched on all the things I wanted to say about this guy. Uh, if we start seeing more people using like Super 17, I think Super 17 probably is the worst uh, matchup for this character right now that I can think of. Uh, he's pretty bad for this guy. Um, you don't see Broly, so I, I, don't, I don't even want to consider like I got a rank grind i think i ran into like one broly or something like no one uses broly um super 17 is the biggest issue for this guy though because of the healing reduction um but you don't really run into him too often but he's like a he's essentially almost like a targeted counter to this guy but uh yeah so pretty good character overall i think he's probably where he should be on this list but if i was to pick out like sort of one area where i would want him to be better at i probably would just choose more damage for him and um, I probably would also add Rising Rush to his buff removal effect. 
that is sort of the one area where I think they could have maybe adjusted that a little bit. I think like, one of the strongest things this guy is doing is removing enemy buff effects and attribute upgrades when they do an ultimate. Only once, but it can activate when he's, when he's on standby, which is strong. So, uh, again, you're, you're really looking to use that against like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate. But w regardless, you're always going to be essentially almost nullifying one ultimate the enemy does. The one, you know, the biggest issue for this character is, and I've been thinking about this actually, um, out of all the characters that you see frequently ran in PvP right now, I think the biggest problem for this character is actually fusing Super Vegito. Uh, and the main reason why is because this character cannot remove buffs when the enemy rushes. So even when this guy is on standby, even when this guy has the buff removal mechanic still available, Super Vegito can just rush any character in your team and still kill them, essentially, right? Unless you're running this guy next to like Omega or something like that, but not a very common thing to do. So Super Vegito is pretty, pretty difficult, honestly, for this character to deal with. This guy, uh, after he gets Vegito to half health, Vegito will just disrupt this character's combo, and then he can fuse up and stuff like that. And it becomes, again, it, it becomes tough for this guy to really gain tons of value against Super Vegito. So that, I think, is the biggest thorn in this guy's side right now. But against, again, the major purple characters who are dominating the game, does really well. So I think number six is fair for this character right now. We'll see how well he ages. Uh, we'll move on to the top five next. All right, number five, we're looking at Zenkai LF Kid Boo. Again, uh, one of the ways the development team has sort of forced the Majin Buu Saga team into being as good as it is, is they gave them a ridiculous Zenkai with this Kid Boo. Uh, I don't really think you guys need me to go in depth about this guy. He's just very, very powerful, very easily Zenkai buffed with all the setups you can make for his bench. Uh, he's not only good on Majin Buu Saga, of course, but he's also just a strong character you can use on, like, powerful opponent. He's good on regen. Um, but, yeah, obviously, Buu Saga is the team you end up fighting this guy the most on because it is just, just the best team right now. I think I think Majin Buu Saga, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, Majin Buu Saga, GT, and Fusion Warriors are the three best teams. And um, staple on Majin Buu Saga, you, you definitely, I think, use this character over uh, fusing Super Vegito on Buu Saga just because he synergizes much better with Evil Buu. And it's much easier to build the core of the team as sort of just like a regen team. It's, it's, it's basically it's just a regen team with ultimate go on on leader slot. Uh, and the team functions much better because you can build a more co uh, cohesive bench uh, with that makeup for the team. So, um, yeah, this kid boo on that setup is very, very strong. Still has a ridiculous, unique equipment, has insane equipment in general, just for all of his teams. Regen and Boo Saga have insane equipment. Um, he's pretty bulky, honestly. He uh, has a pretty, I think, still honestly underrated mechanic where he's lowering the opponent's card draw speed whenever he takes a hit which almost essentially acts as like card draw speed down to the entire enemy team because they switch in and then they just are also afflict uh, affected afflict uh affected afflicted i was want to combine those two words uh the character switches in are also going to be afflicted by that when they hit this guy so um, yeah, this guy is pretty tough to take down. Uh, the one area, actually, there, no, there, there's two, I guess, areas I would say this guy has semi weaknesses in. The first one is the fact that he has very short cover null. So this guy can get insane card draw speed. You just spam green cards with him. He's getting like three times, four times card draw speed. It's ridiculous. Um, but he has very, very short cover null. Um, I think it's only for two cards. Like if you use a blast, he gets cover null. And then I think you can only do one more blast card after that. Um, and then the cover null goes away and you can only get that once per switch in. And then the other area of weakness is not super like, oh my god, I cannot believe they did this. But this is the one character on the Boo Saga team where he is exposed to like endurance nullifying effects, which are pretty prevalent right now. Like this guy is going to be, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call him a sitting duck to Ultimate Gohan, but he's he's very weak to like Ultimate Gohan's drop combo ult. He's weak to just like ultimate Gohan. Like if you're fighting ultimate Gohan player who's just like spamming blue cards from long range, and this guy gets caught by one of them, like he's gonna take a lot of damage and potentially die from that. Um, he could die to Super Vegito's Rush, stuff like that. So that's one thing you got to be careful with this guy with. But obviously, insane Vanish Restoration. I don't really think much else needs to be said about this guy. You guys know how good he is. Uh, Zenkai LF Kid Buu number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, so coming into number three and four, this is actually going to be a shared spot between Fusing Super Vegito and uh, LF Omega Shenron. I think it was pretty tough for me to decide on who I liked better here because these characters are so different from each other. Um, I think Omega is probably just the safest character in the game right now. I mean, he's the de facto character you just put on your team when you don't really have any other character that you you know, you know know you want to put on there. I think he is a member of two of the top three teams in the game right now. He is a core member of Fusion Warriors and a core member of GT. 
Uh, Fusion Warriors, by the way, I would just run these two next to Gogeta, and then, and then GT, you run uh, Baby next to Omega and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I think both those teams are very, very insane. Um, you're always going to run characters like Gogeta and the Fusion Super Vegeta next to Omega, so basically the opponent never can rush you, or they either have to use an ultimate to get rid of Omega's Endurance or uh, Indestructible first, and then that could open up the rush for them later. I've seen players who feel more comfortable rushing like as fast as possible to get rid of Omega's Indestructible, and then that opens up Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate later on, which I think both methods are, are viable, but it's like you're always going to have to sort of just like give up one of your big time hits to get rid of Omega's Indestructible. Um, one of the things that I think is still probably a bit underrated about Omega is how insane the Dragon Ball acquisition on Battle Start is with him. I've had so many matches where I just get my Rising Rush first combo because of that mechanic. And again, I, I feel like with Omega, you just you just rush as soon as you get a Rising Rush, and then y you just get a second one. <laughs> it is very common to just get multiple rushes per match with him, even when the matches don't last for that long. If, especially when you're comparing him, or not comparing him, but especially when, you, when you're pairing him with Fusing Super Vegito, who also um, has the Dragon Ball Destruction immunity, which I think is also very important right now. Uh, something else about Omega 2 is uh, Omega has multiple ways of getting ultimates. And I think a lot of times when you're fighting an opponent who's using uh, LF Tree of My Goku, because I have at this point fought a lot of players who've used Tree of My Goku, I think he's a pretty common character to run into, at least for me, on the JPQ right now. Um, obviously, Tree of My Goku has the one-time buff and attribute upgrade removal when the enemy uses an ultimate. So a lot of times what people will do, and this is what I do typically as well, is I'll use Omega's ultimate just to get rid of that uh, mechanic. I will actually end up buffing Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate with Omega's ultimate, and then I'll just I'll save Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate after I've used Omega's ultimate, and there's like nothing that can survive that. I mean, <laughs> Goku like Goku has already used that buff removal already on the Omega ultimate, so Gogeta at that point is not gonna be um, not gonna be losing his type neutrality. He's got all the the buffs still active, and he's just gonna kill stuff. So um, I think Omega is actually a pretty good character against uh, Tree of Might Goku as well. But overall, I mean, there's not really much else that needs to be said about him. His gauge is pretty pretty good. He's good offensively, good defensively all around. You, you can get the feint, which pretty much just wins you the fight as soon as you get a feint with him with his blue card. So, yeah, I mean, you guys don't need me to explain Omega. You've probably run into it a bunch of times. I think de definitely worthy of being top four, top three on this list here. Uh, fusing Super Vegito, uh, still a very strong character. I, again, have had matches where this guy just gets fused first combo and then rushes and you just win the match. Like... Do you have like a, I don't even know, like you, you have like a 10% chance of just winning the match with this character first combo. <laughs> it's like something like that. It's 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 really dumb, um, which is why it really feels like um, you need to be running all these teams that have ways of dealing with that, whether it's Fusion, Fusion Warriors with Omega, whether it's GT with Omega, whether it is Boo Saga that just has like almost every character that removes buffs when the opponent rushes, but... Uh, even this character in base form is just really, really annoying to deal with. Uh, they have their disrupt. They have the the constant switching back and forth between the characters, getting Dragon Balls. They're immune to Dragon Ball destruction, which I think is an increasingly valuable mechanic, especially now with three of my Goku destroying Dragon Balls when he gets his uh, gauge filled up. But I mean, very easy character to build a team around. I mean, you, you again, you guys. This is one of those characters where you guys do not need me to go through the list of things that they do. I think they are uh, very, very good. Uh, on uh, Fusion Warriors, which I would consider to be a top three team uh, right now, if not top two or even top one. So uh, this is going to be a shared spot three and four, Super Vegito and Omega Shenron. Let us move on to number two. All right. So number two is going to be LF Ultimate Gohan. I don't really need to explain this. He's just a ridiculous character. Uh, buff removal when the enemy uses an ultimate or a rush. He has endurance. He's on one of the best teams in the game with Boo Saga. Uh, unlimited blue card generation, you just spam it, you get green cards, you get your vanish back, you do unlimited damage. He has Dragon Fist's ultimate without needing to actually build up a gauge. Uh, many ways of getting vanish back. Uh, he's just good disrupt. He's cover changes against strike uh, against the uh, blue cards and green cards when they're forward charging attacks. I he's good. I he, he's he's Gohan. I mean, you, you guys do not need me to sit here and tell you why this guy's number two, okay? He's purple, ultimate Gohan number two. Let's move on to number one. All right, and then surprise, surprise, uh, Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is number one on the list. I don't think that uh, Yellow Goku, even if Yellow Goku was like some insane counter towards this guy, there was like almost no shot this guy was dropping from number one. I mean, Goku would have had to have been ridiculous 
ridiculous. He, he would have had to have been red cooler, basically, to, to Ultra Super Fujito for this guy to be even remotely considered below number one. I mean, this guy is insane. Like, you guys know how good. I mean, every match you fight this character essentially. If you're not fighting, if you're not fighting Boo Saga, you're fighting this guy. Okay, <laughs> that's how that's how PvP works right now, essentially. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys don't really need me to sit here and tell you what he does. I think he's definitely been hurt a little bit uh, um, from two things. Number one, he's not on featured boost anymore. I, I, doesn't really matter. I mean, you could definitely feel it a little bit. I think he definitely takes more damage than he than he was before. I think that's every character though. Like whenever any character is off boost, I think more so than the damage they do, it's definitely more noticeable in how much they tank. And this guy, you, you could definitely feel it, but I mean, he, he doesn't even need to tank. He has the gauge, right? And the gauge is just going to stop you from doing anything anyway. So uh, I don't really think it's that big of a deal here. And then Goku being in the game, I think, definitely does hurt him a bit. Uh, Goku's a pretty solid counter to this guy. I mean, he's not, again, he's not red cooler to Super Vegito, but, you know, I, I think he does his job against this character. He's uh, got the anti-healing. He's got the uh, the minus key reduction and cost increase when he uh, is afflicted by lock-in, which works against this guy's gauge filling up. and also works when he uses an AoE green card. Remember, when this guy uses an AoE green card, he locks the opponent in. If he locks Goku in, he cannot do anything after that, so... That is a pretty important thing uh, and, and a tool to use against this character. But still the same dumb character. Still got to get priority against this guy like eight times to kill him. And last boss of the game. You guys know how this guy works. So I'm not going to go too much in depth. Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Goju to number one. Not too much of a surprise there for most players. So just to quickly recap the list. Number 10, we have LF Super 17. Number 9, we have Zenkai LF Fusion Zamasu. Number 8, we have LF Super Baby 2. Number 7, we have Sparking Evil Boo. Number six, we have LF Tree of Might Goku. Number five, we have Zenkai LF Kid Buu. Uh, number three and four was a shared spot between LF Fusing Super Vegito and LF Omega Shenron. Number two was LF Ultimate Gohan. And number one is Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Let me know what you guys think down below of this top 10 list. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one.